So here's a big question. It's got to do with acid-base stoichiometry. And really, this is pretty much the most complicated one. So if you get this one, the rest of them are fastballs across the plate. What's happening is 30 milliliters of a 0.1 mole per liter sodium carbonate solution. We actually calculated the pH of that before and found it to be 11.65. That sodium carbonate is being titrated by, what does that mean? Sodium carbonate is like in a bottom flask and you've got 30 milliliters of it and you're going to pour HCl into it. Well, why would you do that? Well, we're told that it takes 50 milliliters of that HCl to react to this second equivalence point or really kind of neutralize this sodium carbonate. Neutralize, not really going to be a pH of 7. But what it is, is what's going to happen is that this sodium carbonate is going to have protons uh, that are going to be uh, uh, given to it and when it reaches the point where we have an equivalent amount in chemical reaction of that acid and base reacting together, that equivalence point can be a point where we can then do some stoichiometry to find something that's unknown. And in this question, the unknown uh, thing is the concentration of the HCl. Find what's the original HCl concentration? So somebody says, I don't know what the concentration of this HCl is. You can do a chemical reaction, an acid and a base, together to be able to determine an unknown concentration. If we know when the point of equivalence takes place where the moles are stoichiometrically equivalent to each other. They don't have to be equal, they just have to be stoichiometrically equivalent. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. So, what's the list of chemicals here that's, that, that, that we've got in solution? Sodium carbonate, sodium ions, carbonate ions. Hydrochloric acid is really hydronium and chloride ion and water. In that list of chemicals, the strongest acid is hydronium and the strongest base is carbonate. That, on an acid-base chart, the carbonate's the lowest on the right and hydronium's up here as, as being strong in, uh, on an acid-base chart. Strong acid. So this acid is reacting with this base and these two products form when a proton is transferred from here to here to make these two chemicals. Now here's the thing though. This is the Bronsted-Lauer equation for this reaction, but for the first part or first half of the reaction because I said second equivalence point. What does that mean? Well, this reaction, when you finally react enough of this to react with this that these two are both gone and only you have this in solution left over, then you've reached the point of first equivalence. But, see that negative ch charge there? This carbonate was saying before, hey, I could take a proton from you and then once I've formed this, I could take another one. And since hydrochloric acid is being titrated in, which means poured in, which means continuously added, then you could take the HCO3 negative that forms and react it with the continuously added hydronium ion to then form H2CO3 and water. Again, these two reactions, both stoichiometric because of the presence of hydronium, 100% reactions can be added together. So net-wise, you get CO3 2 negative plus two hydroniums, because it takes two hydroniums to give their protons to one of these. This cancels with this, you see, on opposite sides, to make H2CO3 AQ plus 2H2O. Now stay with me on this one. Remember that this chemical right here, H2CO3, can spontaneously decompose into CO2 and H2O, and then you can see this equation actually written net equation-wise as this, CO2 gas plus 3 H2O liquid. Okay? Uh, uh, that's pretty good. Now, what do we do for stoichiometry? Once we have an equation, we can actually put our information underneath and figure out what we're going to do. So, once we've got the equation, 30 mils of 0.1 of this, because this sodium carbonate is represented by this. There's the 30.0 milliliters of the 0.10 mole per liter that. And what do we know about this? The hydrochloric acid, we needed 50 milliliters of this to react with 30 mils of this. We need to find the concentration of that. See how it's going to be done? Here's the concentration. Here's the volume. That will get us the moles. In a 1 to 2 ratio, we can then figure out the moles that we have here. Moles divided by liters, that milliliters can be turned into liters finds us the concentration, and we can do that all in one line of stoichiometry. And that line of stoichiometry is right here. So, there's your 30 milliliters. I've turned it into liters, but kept my significant digits. There's three. There's my liters of that times my moles per liter 
of Na2CO3. See, that's really Na2CO3. It's a net equation, but I just put the original chemical back in. You can do it or not. That's fine. And therefore, when we multiply this times this, we get the moles of the Na2CO3. But we don't want moles of Na2CO3. I think meters cancel, see? We want moles of HCl. Then the 2 to 1 ratio here gets us the moles of HCl. When we divide by the liters here, which is 0 0.0500, that's 50 milliliters, do all of that right here, you get moles per liter of the HCl. And the answer is going to be 0.12 moles per liter HCl. We just found the unknown concentration of that acid with that one line of stoichiometry, taking that information, putting it underneath the equation, recognizing that if there's a continuous addition or a titration occurring, occurring and your chemical, your base, can accept more than one proton, then it will. And so you've got to be aware that there's two equations that can be added together to make net equations. And by the way, if somebody said to you, what's the pH of that solution? You could just negative log that, it's a strong acid, and the pH of that originally would have been, I think it's 0.92 as a pH for that. Acid-based stoichiometry.